this is Miss Bailey with the Knox County Public Library Tutor Team and I am here today with another video lesson covering kindergarten and first grade reading academic standards. Thank you so much for joining me again today with our tutor team videos and I just want to remind you that it's always encouraged to go back and watch the videos that were recorded prior to this one as the scope and sequence is really um, intentional. Um, and so the lessons build on each other and it's really important that your learner can do the lessons that were before this one in order to complete this video successfully. Let's take a look at our kindergarten and first grade academic standards that are covered in this video. This lesson covers specifically phonological awareness standards for kindergarten and first grade. And if you look at the language of these academic standards, you'll notice that um, maybe the lesson covers a bit of the, like a small portion of the um, standard, or it's working its way up to covering the complete standard. If you are interested in looking at additional academic standards that are grade level specific, please feel free to visit the IDOE website that is listed right here. And I always include some tips for parents on how to modify this video to best benefit your learner. So here are some suggestions. Uh, the way that I have these set up, the purple dots represent the level of difficulty. So these suggestions right here are for learners who are looking for a little bit of extra practice, um, who might need to complete the, this video lesson in smaller increments. These are additional um, modifications that I recommend for learners who are not quite ready to complete the entire video or um, need a little bit of extra help in order to complete the video with ease. Here are some tips on how to differentiate or modify for learners who are um, doing pretty well with these videos, who are a good finding a good fit with these videos. And so if your learner is doing really well and you see that they are not in they're not experiencing any um, difficulties, please make sure that you feel free to pause and replay as much as needed. Um, the three purple dots represent modifications that I recommend for learners who are ready to extend these academic standards and looking for more of a challenge. Again, if you're interested in looking at additional grade level specific standards, please feel free to visit that website. As far as materials go for this video lesson, your learner will need some paper and a pencil, and you will see these symbols appear when these materials are needed. All right, learners, we are ready to get started with our warm up. The first thing that we are going to do to warm up is our sound deck exercise. And the way that we do that, if you remember, is we say the letter's name, we say the picture that we see, and then the sound that the letter makes. Let's go. A, apple, a. Ah. B, boy, b. Oh, I forgot to mention. Also, as you're saying the sounds, I would like to have you trace them. So trace them in the sky with your finger. So up in the air, you can trace them on your surface if you're using a desk or a table, um, just so that you feel the sensation of what it feels like when you're tracing these letters. And this is a great way to practice letter formation as well. C, cat, k, D, dog, d, E, egg, e, eh. F, fish, G, goat, g, H, hat, 
I igloo I. J jam j. K kite k. L lamp o. M man m. N nest m. O ox a. P pig p. Q u queen qu. R rat r. S snake s. T top t. U up a. Uh. V van v. W wagon w. X box x. Y yo yo y. Z zebra z. So those are all of the letters that make up our alphabet. And now we're ready to practice those digraphs that we have been working on in previous lessons. So remember, digraphs are when we have two letters working together to say one sound. Sh, like ship, like thumb. Now that TH digraph is one that can say two different sounds. And that is the one that I tell you that I want to see your your tongue when you're saying that. So like thumb or th like this. Ch like chair. Wh like whistle. And that's the one that is, is different from just plain old W wh wagon. It has more of um, pretend like you're rolling out a birthday candle or you are actually whistling and you're pushing more air out as you're trying to say that sound. Okay, the words, the sounds that we've been working on most recently are actually three letters working together to say a sound. Ang, ing, and our new one today is ong. Before we go on to our nonsense word fluency practice, in our visual practice, let's go over what a good reader, writer, and speller looks and sounds like. Good letter formation. Always, always, even when you're tracing those letters in the air, um, no matter when you're making those letters, you always want to use good letter formation. Keep your goal in mind. Try your best. Never give up. And good readers, writers, and spellers make mistakes. So friends, I never want you to feel like because you've made a mistake, and mistakes can be frustrating. It's okay if you feel frustrated. Um, but the important thing is that we take a deep breath. Maybe we even need to take a break from it and come back. But we come back from our mistakes and we try to fix them. The more we practice, the better and more comfortable we'll feel. So also good readers, writers, and spellers think about and say the sounds as they are reading and writing. And last but not least, look for sounds everywhere. Okay, because they are, they're everywhere in real life. My readers, writers, and spellers, we are ready to practice our nonsense word fluency. So with this exercise, I want you to make sure that as you are saying the word, before you say the whole word, chop it up or stretch it out so that you are practicing identifying each sound as you see it and read it. So let's look at that first one. Y-ab. Now put it all together. Yab. G-ex. Gex. Qu-idge. Quidge, r of, rav, and the last one, z um, zum. Okay, now when you are working um, in school or on homework, you might see words like this, and our the goal isn't to break them into parts. And and you know your teacher or whoever you are working with wants you to just read the whole word, and that's really important too. Okay, so let's do that practice right now. Just looking at these words and reading them as we see them. Yab, gex, quidge, rob, 
zum. And you might be thinking, Miss Bailey, why are we reading these words? They sound so silly and they're not real. The thing about nonsense word fluency practice is that, again, it really helps us identify those sounds. Um, and it helps even more whenever they're in words that are kind of off the wall and they just, they don't look right and they don't sound right either. So it really helps us master those letter identification, that letter identification and the sound identification. So don't forget your nonsense words. Looking at some real words here. Let's go through and before we read these and, and break them up into sounds, I want you to try to spy some sounds that look familiar to you. I see the sound ing, like whistle, ang. I see ch, like chair, v, like this. Okay, so it's really important when, before you start reading, kind of take a look with your eagle eyes to see what sounds are familiar to you so that when you get to them, you're like, oh yeah, I know that, I can do this. Okay, so let's look at that first row of words. And again, um, sometimes when you're working with your teacher or an adult on homework or with work in class, your goal is not to, you know, break the words into sounds or sound them out. Your goal is just to read them quickly and with fluency. So, again, good readers, writers, and spellers always think about their goal. Now, with this practice, we want to start out where we are breaking the words into parts. And then we'll read them all together. W-ing, wing, s-ing, sing. Ing, thing, sp, er, ing, spring, st, ing, sing, b, er, ing, bring, h, ang, hang, w, n, when, w, ip, whip, ch, amp, champ, v, em, them, v, at, that. All right, very good, friends. Now, I went through that really quickly, so don't feel like you have to go that quickly. Always feel free to pause and slow it down or do a, if you, you missed a word and you think, oh, I didn't realize that that's what that word was and try it again. So always, always feel free to pause or, or go back and redo or rewind whatever you need to do. These videos are meant for you to take them at your own pace. Now let's go through and read these words just as we see them, and we're going to try to kind of pick up the pace as we read them. Wing, sing, thing, spring. Let's read every other word in that first row. Wing, thing. Okay, let's look at the second row of words. Sting, bring, hang, win. Uh, let's read them backwards. Win, hang, bring, sting. And the last row of words, whip, champ, them, that. Okay, there's lots of different ways that you can practice reading these words as you see them. You, instead of going through the rows, you can go down the columns. Um, you can read every other word. Uh, you can read them backwards. Just have some fun with it and practice, because remember, practice makes progress. Now we are ready for our sound bank for words to spell. So you are going to need your materials, your pencil and your paper. All right, our sound bank is pretty big today. We have 14 sounds. Don't worry, we don't have 14 words to spell. Okay, that first sound in our sound bank is ing. What sound says ing? give you a hint. Three letters work together to make that sound. It's one of our newest sounds. Actually, it was our new sound last week. Okay, second sound, s like snake. Now, I would like for you to repeat these sounds back to me and then say them as you write them. The 
The third sound is ang. Say it. Good, ang. So this is another one. It's one of our newer sounds that has three letters working together to make that sound. Ang. And as you write it, say it. Four is wh, like whistle. Five, ch, like chair. Say it. Good, ch. Write it. Say it as you write it. Six is th, like thumb. Or it could say th, like that. Seven is sh, like ship. Good, say it. Sh, and say it as you write it. Eight is t, like top. Now, when you say it back to me, or if you, as you're saying it, as you write it, you don't have to repeat the visual that goes with it. I'm just saying that so that you're thinking of that and it's drawing that sound more quickly and easily for you. Number nine is a, ah, like apple. 10, b, like boy. When we write this letter, we bring it down up and around. We want to be really careful that as we're practicing writing that b like boy, we are not mixing it up with d like dog. 11 is uh like up. 12 is r like rat. 13 i like igloo. 14 like pig. Good. Say it as you write it. Okay, friends, let's check. These are the sounds that you should have. And if you need to, pause and go ahead and double check your work. It's okay to make mistakes. Remember, just make sure that you try to fix them. And don't be too hard on yourself. Take a deep breath and tell yourself, I got this, because you do. Okay, we're ready for using our sound bank for words to spell. And there's that light bulb symbol. Who remembers what that is there for? <laughs> yeah, it's there to remind us of what our goal is. So our goal is to think about the sounds that we know as we read and write. That sound bank is up there in the right hand corner for you to remind you to think about those sounds as you're writing. And a clue is always, okay, wait a minute. That sound is not in my sound bank. I need to look and see what sounds like that and what is in the sound bank. That's what you need to use that for. All right, word number one, sing. Okay, repeat it back to me. Good, sing. Now chop it up or stretch it out. Think about how many sounds, sing. Good, there's two sounds. Say those sounds as you write the word, sing. And if you are having a hard time thinking of, oh shoot, I don't remember what sound says ing. Use that sound bank. What do you have in your sound bank that says ing? Like king. Number two, thing. Say it back. Good, thing. Now break it into its sounds. Ing. Two sounds, good. Even though there's more than two letters, there's only two sounds. Say those sounds as you write the word. Again, check your sound bank. Three is thrash, 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 good, thrash. Not trash like I throw my trash away, but thrash like oh, I'm moving around really crazy and fast. Thrash, like a fish out of water, thrash. Er, ash. Use that sound bank to help you. Number four, chat. Good, chat. 
Love the way you're repeating those sounds, I mean that word back to me before you break it up into sounds. Patch, at. Say those sounds as you're writing it out so you don't forget any. Because sometimes our brains are working faster than our hands can go as, we're, as we are um, writing, or our brains are working faster than what our mouths can um, get our thoughts out. We're so excited, and so we accidentally forget some of those sounds. So make sure you're saying them as you're writing them. Number five, bang, b ang. Don't bang your head on the bar, bang. Bang. Number six, bath. Good bath. B a th. Bath. Number seven, shut. Sh a t. Shut. And number eight, whip. W i p. Now, if you look up in your sound bank, spoiler alert. Do you have plain old W, what like wagon? No, you don't. So what sound do you have that says what like whistle? All right, let's check our words. Here they are. Those are the eight words spelled correctly. Again, if you need to pause to um, fix anything or or double check, or maybe you accidentally missed a sound, go ahead and do that now. Press play when you're ready. Okay, we're gonna do some review of the sound ing, I-N-G, ing. We're gonna have five words here. You don't have a sound bank for these five words, except for the one in your beautiful brain. So make sure you use that. The first word that we're going to review is spring. Say it. Good. Spring. Now, when I was your age, every time I tried to write this word, I spelled sping on accident. So chop it up or, or stretch it out so you don't forget any of those sounds. P er ing. I always forgot that er sound. Number two, sting, sting, good. Number three, bring, b er ing, bring. Number four, cling, cling, like um, the seaweed likes to cling to the boat, cling. Ing. And remember, all of these words have the sound ing in them. And if you notice the pattern, the ing sound is at the end of each of these words. Number five, wing. W ing. All right, let's check. Here are those words spelled correctly. That was our new sound last week. Now we are reviewing it and we are ready for a new sound. Ong, O-N-G, ong. This is our new sound this week. We have five words here. The first word is long, o-ong, long. How long can you go without blinking? Long. Number two, song. Ong. Number three, prong. P er ong. Prong. Now, I'm going through these pretty quickly. So I don't want you to think that that means that you can't pause it to take the time to repeat the word, stretch it out, and then write it and say the sound as you're writing it. So you, after I say the word, pause it and then press play when you're ready. Number four, strong, 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 and five, gong, g-ong. Let's check our work. 
There are those words spelled correctly. How did you do? Again, in each of these words, that ong sound, O-N-G, is in each of them, and it comes at the end of the word. It's the last sound that you hear. Oh my gosh, friends, it's already time for our sentences. We are rocking out. Okay, so here are these sentences. Remember, the words that are already spelled for you are words that I do not expect you to spell on your own. So that's why I have them there for you. Now, the, the words that are have blank spaces, those I expect for you to spell correctly or do your best to spell them correctly. The first sentence is, they could sing a song. Now, if you're not quite ready and you need to pause to write the sentence, pause it and then press play when you're ready. So those blanks, that first word sing, has two sounds. So think about what sounds you hear in the word sing. And then song, again, two sounds. Those are the words in that sentence that I expect you to spell correctly because those are the sounds that we've been working on. Notice how these sentences start with a capital letter and end with a punctuation mark. So that first sentence is, they could sing a song. The next sentence is, where is the strong man? Now this is a question. So the end mark here, the, the punctuation mark, is actually a question mark. Where is the strong man? So think about the word strong. That's a word that we actually dispelled a little bit ago. And I expect you to do your best to spell it on your own. St, er, ong, and then man, m, a, n. Pause and press play when you're ready. We are standing in a long line. Standing has a lot of sounds in it. So say it and chop it up or stretch it out and then think about those sounds as you write them. We are standing in a long line line. And the last sentence, I love ping pong. Ping ing pong. Are you ready to see how you did? Let's check. There are those completed sentences. How did you do? I hope that you're giving yourself a mega clap or a big clap on the back because you did your best. Now, maybe your best does not mean that you spelled all of those words correctly. Okay, so remember, good readers and writers do their best. Okay. All right, friends, let's wrap up by talking about our goal. Today, we thought about sounds so that we can spell and read words correctly. Our goal was achieved when we used what we knew about sounds, what we know about sounds, as we read and write. We did a ton of that today. And if you want to go back and check, look for all of the light bulb visuals because those visuals are there to remind you, hey, 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 this is a great opportunity to meet your goal of using what you know about sounds as you read and write. Don't forget, readers, writers, and spellers, to stay on the lookout for our sounds. So all the sounds we've worked on, we've worked on so many. I'm so proud of you. You can find them as you read, as you write, 
as you spell, as you listen to music, um, games, video games, movies, whatever you are listening to as you walk or as you ride. Okay, and that could be on a bike too. Safety first, but if you are looking around, I bet you will be shocked at how many of the sounds that we've been working on you can actually find out there in the real world. That's why we practice them so that you know them and you can use them on your own. Friends, thank you so much for joining me again today and I hope that I'll see you next week. You can watch this tutor team video again um, and there's tons of others, not just with me, but with my great friends, Mrs. Worland and Mr. Frederick, if you're looking for videos that cover second and third grade academic standards or fourth and fifth grade academic standards. Um, the KCPL, the Knox County Public Library Tutor Team YouTube link is right here, but all of these videos are posted on our playlist on YouTube and you can find them there as well. I will see you next time and I hope you have a wonderful day.